Welcome everybody to this week's Spotlight interview with two-time ARCA champion, Jesse Love. Jesse, how are you doing? I'm doing great. I'm still shivering a little bit. Just got out of the uh, ice bath. So it takes like 20 minutes for you to get back to normal. And I'm still uh, shivering and feel like I'm in an ice cube. Okay. So for those of you that do not understand what an ice bath is, that means that he's been setting in basically a bathtub filled with nothing but ice and a little bit of water. Yeah, it's, it's miserable for a little bit, but you kind of, your body goes on after a while and you sit there for about 15 minutes and you kind of just zone out. So I'm gathering you were at, at TRD? Yeah, TBC here in the North Carolina. All right. Well, Jesse, you've had a, you've had a busy, busy season so far. I mean, you've been racing everything that's got like four wheels on it. You've been doing Arca super late models. Uh, you, you, you put in some, um, some micro sprint racing out at Millbridge, which, I mean, gosh, that's like a who's who's race out there every uh, Tuesday and Wednesday night. So that's kind of cool. But you got a big race coming up this weekend at Pocono Raceway. So give us some insight on that. It's huge. It's obviously my biggest uh, track that I'm going to go to um, by a long shot, by about uh, 200%. So um, much bigger racetrack than uh, what I've been to, but I like the big tracks. I like working with air and uh, Pocono is obviously one of the coolest you know, places on the circuit just to drive around. Obviously such a weird racetrack, unique, and uh, looking forward to you know seeing how we can get rolling and our number 20 crescent tools sort of cameras. So it should be fun. Obviously, it's been a lot of fun in the sim and watching racing and, and the film and all that stuff. That aspect's really cool for Pokemon. So looking forward to it, and uh, hopefully we have a good day. So have, have you figured out why they call it the Tricky Triangle? It's definitely tricky. What a what a weird place. Obviously, every, every corner is so different, and um, it, it's just – it's unique to that school part is uh, you're going to a place that's not like any other place and um, definitely not a cookie, cookie, cookie cutter racetrack um, by any means. So I'm looking forward to that aspect. Um, obviously going to learn a lot there for my first time and uh, hopefully uh, we can figure out where victory lane is too. Okay, so what do you think your top speed will be there? I think we got about 180, 190. Uh, 180, 190. That's yeah. cool. All right, so let's, let's now move from the Tricky Triangle and let's talk about a Trans Am TA2 race that you've got coming up later in the year at Watkins Glen. That's awesome. I can't wait for that. Uh, Watkins Glen, obviously, a really cool racetrack. One that I'm looking forward to going to in ARCA and the TSU stuff. I've uh, been there before and the uh, touring car stuff they did, the sports car stuff. And that was a lot of fun. I um, had a lot of speed there and just a good time, good racetrack, fun racetrack. And, uh, New, York, New York's always a cool to go to, so um, that'll be fun, be cool. My first TA2 race with uh, Nitro Motorsports. Uh, Nick Tucker, obviously the owner over there, he's um, also my uh, karting coach and, and does all the kart, karting stuff for uh, Toyota, so it be cool to kind of already have that chemistry there. Uh, obviously, it'd be cool to go be able to rack Alpha TA2 win and uh, learn a lot from those guys who are really good, so um, good seat time. Obviously, it's important to get seat time at a place like Watkins Glen. And um, I always love road racing stuff. Yeah, road racing has become such a major part of NASCAR, and and I think uh, truthfully, I think in the future it's only going to get bigger. I I was uh, uh, talking with Ben Kennedy, and it was almost like you know maybe a third of the season could end up eventually being road courses. So getting that seat time and, and understanding that is going to be huge for um, for your future moving forward. Yeah, even though I like uh, I like the oval stuff and it'd be cool to even have some more dirt races, but um, it's definitely cool to have a variety of, of all different you know shapes and, and sizes and, and types of racing. So um, the road course stuff's been great. Uh, it's been on some pretty good racing this year, obviously with the cup stuff, and um, and I've, I'm getting a lot better at it. So. Um, I enjoy it. I've obviously had a good bit of success on road course and looking forward to, um, you know, what's to come, whatever uh, NASCAR wants to uh, throw at us. So looking back, all that, all that legend car racing stuff that you did on the road course, is that, is that really helping out now that you're, you know, back into a full body car? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it's, it's huge. Just kind of having that 
um, that feel for a road course and knowing how to uh, manipulate the road course and, and set up your passes and, and just go about the kind of flow that you find yourself in when you're road racing. So uh, it's awesome. I love road racing. It's, it's one of my favorite forms of racing, and especially when you're fast and you're good. It makes it that much better. So um, it's, been, it's been great. And, uh, yeah, Legend Car stuff has really paid off. All right, so real quick, we know that you're going to be doing some midget racing later in the year, too. Are you excited about that? Yeah, that's awesome. I can't thank Chad Bowden and Trent Rodriguez, my boss at uh, Toyota, enough for giving me the opportunity. Um, obviously, my dirt stuff was, was kind of done for for a while and got this opportunity to kind of try it again and see how we do and, and did the Millbridge stuff and racing and so the style guys, Kyle Larson, Christian Bell, uh, Brent Cruz, all those really good guys. And, um, and we've been able to, you know, be really fast and, and be up front, competing for wins. So I've got second three or four times now to Christopher or Kyle or Brent or somebody, but um, looking forward to uh, have that team run a midget for, for Chad. And if we do well in the first few races, we'll, we'll go do some more. All right. So real quick, as we wrap this up, I got to ask this question, and you brought up Millbridge. What is it about Millbridge and micro sprints that is attracting all of these NASCAR stars? I mean, you got Larson and Bell, and I mean, Briscoe, and you know, I've seen even Sheldon out there running some races. And what is it about Millbridge that's getting these people to, are, are these drivers that want to go out there and compete? Is it just all about having fun? It's kind of a perfect storm. Um, obviously, it's a lot of fun to go there and just bash and, and rip the fence. And um, obviously, it's, it's hard racing. It's good racing. And there's a lot of hype around it with media. Um, I think once one guy comes like Christopher, then the next guy comes like Kyle, and then everybody comes. So um, dirt racing is also something that people want to get better at, just like the road course stuff. And that's why you'll see guys like Ross and Daniel Suarez and all the other cup guys want to come around some dirt stuff and get more familiar with it. So uh, like when Bristol Dirt comes around, I mean, it's flooded with Tyler Reddick and, and all these other uh, NASCAR drivers. So um, it's cool, and it's always fun just to bang the boards at Millbridge. All right. Well, Jesse, thank you for being with us this evening on, on the Spotlight interview. And best of luck this weekend at Pocono Raceway. And I'm, I'm, I'm sure we're going to be checking back with, in, back with you later this year. So good luck on everything else, and go get them at Pocono. Thanks, guys. I appreciate it. All right. Well, that's it for this week's Spotlight interview. Now back to the show.